And there's also studies showing that, you know, you can take you can take a 50-year-old person who is sedentary. So they're they're not physically active, but they don't have any other markers of disease. So they're not, you know, they don't have type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease or hypertension. And put them under a pretty intense exercise protocol for two years. And basically, you can reverse the aging of their heart by almost 20 years. So this study was done by Dr. Ben Levine out of UT um, Southwestern in Dallas. And um, what he showed was, you know, so as we age, our heart structure gets, it changes with time. So it gets, our heart gets stiffer and shrinks. And that plays a role in increasing our cardiovascular disease risk. It plays a role in, you know, affecting our uh, aerobic capacity. So what he wanted to know, he asked the question, oh, can I, can I take these people that have essentially been sedentary their life, their whole life, but they're otherwise not, you know, they don't have any identifiable diseases. And can I, can I make their hearts look better? And so, um, his group put them on a pretty intense exercise protocol for two years and it was a progressive loading. So, you know, it wasn't like right out the gate, they were doing five hours of exercise a week, you know, which is essentially what they were doing at the end of the two years. They're doing about five to six hours of um, a lot of vigorous intensity exercise, moderate as well, but they were doing high intensity interval training. They were doing something called the Norwegian four by four protocol. This is, you know, you're doing four minutes of, of you know, as, as hard as you can maintain for that four minutes. So, you know, most people are probably doing 80% their max heart rate or something like that, or they're not going all out, obviously. And then you recover for three minutes and that's really, you're really going down to let your heart rate go down. And then you do that four times. They did that once a week on top of just doing a lot of aerobic, you know, training. And they were able to reverse the aging, the structural changes to their aging heart by 20 years, wow. which is incredible. You know, absolutely incredible. You take a 50-year-old and make their hearts look like a 30-year-old. Like who wouldn't, wouldn't who wouldn't sign up for that? You're not going to get that with beta hydroxybutyrate yeah, or yeah, lactate. Yeah. And what what do we know? Again, another like what do we know or not know about um, the the impact of uh, vigorous exercise versus endurance exercise on moving the needle on cardiovascular health? I mean, they're both good for cardiovascular health, right? You know, like I what I was mentioning was the cardiorespiratory fitness aspect, and the reason I was mentioning that is because almost half the population isn't responding to that if they're just doing the sort of moderate intensity exercise where they're doing 70% their max heart rate for two and a half hours a week. I like to mention that because it seems as a sizable part of the population really does need a little bit more stress for their body to adapt for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that's well understood, but what is understood of that is does it occur? And so, you know, I do think Again, you don't want to compare apples to oranges. So like a lot of times we'll look at what these endurance athletes are doing and they're doing a lot of zone two exercise, right? But they're doing a lot of it. So I don't think you can compare someone who's doing over 10 hours a week no, no, no. to yeah, two. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, nobody should really look at that as a, as a benchmark to decide what they're going to do. And, you know, those people their zone two is very unlike the average person's zone two because they're, because they've been doing it for so many years and they've built this huge base, like the, their kind of like pace that they're able to maintain um, would be, you know, beyond the threshold of an average person. So they're, they're putting a, a even though they're cardiovascularly, they can handle it. They're, they are putting an additional strain on their ligaments and their muscles and things like that. That's very different from the average person. But in that conversation, I think it needs to be said that, um, what endurance athletes or, or any like, you know, elite athlete understands is, is the idea of training on these polarities. And I think the average person spends most of their time somewhere kind of in the middle. They're going a little bit too hard for zone two. If they only have a couple hours a week, like zone two, because they're not that fit, feels like they're not getting anything out of it. And they're not pushing themselves hard enough to get into that threshold vigorous state required to catalyze all of these kind of benefits that, that you're talking about. So, a lot of it is like slowing down and then knowing when to speed up and how you create that mix and the construct of how many hours a week you're capable of like devoting to these things. Right. And then don't forget, we have to add in some strength training and resistance training. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you have to work and take care of your family. And so, yeah. you know, it, it there's a lot of uh, factors here. And I think that's where I, I personally do 
like the, you know, the, I guess, option to, to go a little bit harder and not have to spend as much time um, and, and, and at least be able to make improvements to my cardiovascular system, to, you know, cardiorespiratory fitness and get things like the, the lactate. And not to mention you're doing other, there's other benefits, like you're increasing the number of mitochondria on your muscle, you know, it's called mitochondrial biogenesis. Mm-hmm. And that's both, you know, doing moderate intensity and high intensity, uh, you know, exercise does that. But over time, isn't uh, zone two a more effective way to build mitochondrial density? So it depends. If you're if you're comparing, let's say you're comparing someone that is doing a 30-minute zone two run versus a 30-minute more vigorous run, then you're gonna you're gonna increase the number of mitochondrial density more by doing the vigorous intensity. And that is because lactate itself actually signals to your mitochondria to make more mitochondria. And the reason for that is because your your body, it's an adaptation. Your body is freaking out. Your body's going, I can't use my mitochondria. I'm not getting oxygen here quick enough to make energy with my mitochondria. Therefore, I need to make more mitochondria to try to adapt so that I can m- use the mitochondria to make the energy. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. so the high intensity, so the vigorous intensity exercise stresses the mitochondria in a way through lactate that's increasing the mitochondrial number. Um, but, you know, it, zone two training can affect my, mitochondrial size. So it can make mitochondrial, it can in, increase the mitochondrial size. And so there are differences there. But um, generally speaking, if you were doing the same volume of training, then ha- then a more vigorous exercise would actually improve mitochondrial density more. Now, if you were to then take and do, like, let's say you were going to do an hour long zone two versus, you know, the 30 minute, then maybe you start to get more differences, right? So mm-hmm. again, it's like, it all depends on what we're comparing here. Apples yeah, to yeah, oranges, yeah. like are the same durations the same or, because most of the time, if you're doing zone two, you're going to have a longer duration anyways, mm-hmm. right? Then that's the whole point of doing high intensity interval training is t- it's time efficient, yeah. right? So you can get more bang for your buck um, in some regards. Now there are differences as well. And certainly for people that are endurance athletes, they have to spend more time doing doing more um, zone two. But in no way would I ever say or think it's accurate to say that doing vigorous intensity exercise is not improving your mitochondrial function or improving mitochondrial number or density because it absolutely is. Um, it's very, very strongly improving mitochondrial function and mitochondrial density. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like you're lacking something by, you know, engaging more in high intensity interval training and not doing enough zone two either. Um, so I think there's a little confusion out there with with that. So yeah. just want to clarify yeah, that. Yeah, yeah.